What's up, nerds? It's Paul here at Radio Free Hammer Hall, and we're going to do a little bit of a throwback today. We're going to talk about Math Hammer in 3rd Edition Age of Sigmar. So, um, Rule 13.3 uh, restricts hit, wound, and save modifiers. Uh, the hit and wound modifiers to plus one or minus one and saves to plus one and then no restriction on the downside. So that changes your, your hit and wound stacking that used to happen in some armies. Uh, now that is restricted and also it there's not that much like minus one to hit or wound floating around, but there's a lot of minus one to your save uh, between effects and the prevalence of rend. So that's certainly something to be aware of. Um, Rerolls have been made extremely rare. Um, even reroll one uh, ones are extremely rare. Um, a lot of that was all removed with errata. So. The other thing to bear in mind is a lot of those abilities got replaced with a built-in plus one uh, to hit or wound or save somewhere in the war scroll so that your additional plus one you might be able to put on it with all-out attack or all-out defense you can't do anything with because you've already gotten your plus one in the war scroll somewhere. Um, Again, as I said, minus one to hit and wound roll effects are not that common. So stacking your plus one to hits aren't that useful, but stacking your plus one to saves can be very useful because you're actually negating rend and negating other abilities when that comes along. So what's nice is all out defense makes that much more situational and just really kind of reading the battlefield and seeing what attacks are potentially going to be coming at a unit in the next turn gives you an idea of where you want to apply your save bonuses where you can uh, plus one to save is a lot more common than it used to be um, which seems to actually make sense um, because it's restricted to plus one and then negating rend so that uh, has made the bat the playing field interesting, to say the least. Okay, I wanted to talk about the ranking of different modifiers and what all of this really means. Additional attacks and additional damage, basically those really kind of tie for first. I put additional attacks ahead of additional damage because it is uh, a lower standard deviation when you increase attacks versus increasing damage, your your spread is less, your variability is less. So additional damage, while it is just as good as additional attacks, um, on averages, it creates a, a different distribution. Also of note, depending on the number of attacks and the amount of damage, that can change which one of these is better. If, for example, you have a profile with two attacks and one damage, then you would want to increase the damage rather than increasing attacks if possible. Um, so it, these can really kind of flip depending on your circumstances. Uh, but I think in general, additional attacks is probably better. Number three is rerolling all fails. Um, on a four plus roll, this is increasing your output by 50%. Um, you're basically increasing your output by the inverse of your odds to succeed. So if you're on a three plus, your odds to succeed are 66.7%. If you get all of your re-rolls, then you increase your odds by 33%. Um, plus one to your roll, that is number four. Uh, that is going to be, a, again, a sliding scale based on what your base is, but as an example, on a four up, it's going to increase by 33%. 
on a uh, three up, it's going to increase by 25%. So it's just going to be a little bit variable depending on uh, what your base roll is. And it'll be even higher when you have uh, you know, a five up or a six up that you're improving. But remember that that percentage of increase isn't necessarily always the thing that you want to be concerned about. It's like what the ending percentage is. Taking a six up to a five up, although it's doubling what your uh, output is, it is still it's still a very high chance to fail. So you want to take that into consideration. Um, I, just because it's become so prevalent and so common, uh, I threw in extra hits on a roll of six in here, um, on a four up roll that's increasing your output by 33% as well. That's going to vary again, based on how good your hit roll actually is. Um, there's some things that do things on the wound roll like a, a six to wound it will increase damage or increase or add another um wound to be saved those are also good effects they're slightly less again than the hit rolls because they're going to happen less often you're already getting a bunch of hits filtered out by your hit roll so you're always going to be rolling less dice to wound so you have less of an opportunity to hit those sixes and finally down at the bottom and i cannot stress this enough re-roll ones to hit or save re-rolling ones not the wonderful youtube channel love you guys shout out to jack sexiest man in warhammer um re-rolling ones always increases your output by 16 and two thirds percent no matter what your roll is. It's just a flat percentage increase when you're on a two up to begin with. The re-rolling ones does still only increase you by 16.67%, but it's also effectively re-rolling all fails at the same time, so it's still really powerful. And I think that's one of the things that gets people confused is like getting Archeon to re-roll his save when you can easily get him to a two plus, putting him on two plus re-rollable makes him like invincible. But in general, I think that skews people's perspective on how valuable re-rolling ones actually is, including uh, with the scarcity of where we're at with re-rolling ones. So that is going to lead into my final point here is the scarcity heuristic bias. Things that are in limited supply seem like they're more valuable than they actually are. That is one of those little bits of psychology that is important to get your head around when you're looking at things like how you're going to invest your points, how you're going to invest your command points when you're building your list, when you're playing the game. Rerolling ones is a limited supply resource now. So it seems like it's more valuable because it's a, it's just a way to get another buff when other buffs are restricted. It's still a very weak mechanic. So you have to look at if you're, say, spending a command point to get reroll ones, is that actually worth a command point, or do you have other things in your arsenal that may be better to um, give you uh, a greater benefit? So, rerolling ones, weak mechanic. You know, the I'm forgetting the name of it now in Ossiarch Bone Reapers. Um, there's a spell that gives you reroll ones and then you can cast it multiple times. Um, right? Like that's still not that big of a bonus. So the question is like, is that worth that spell cast? And is it worth the points of putting that 
wizard in your army to begin with to get that bonus. Um, you know, being able to cast it several times does increase its utility, but you're not necessarily going to have that many units in combat all the time. So that is definitely something to be taken into consideration here. I think desperation for getting more buffs is driving people to look at things like rerolling ones as being more valuable than they actually are. And getting buffs to hit and wound also are like, gimme, 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 because you want to get as much of that as possible because it's a little bit more prevalent than it used to be. Um, the thing that you really want to stretch for is when you can reroll everything or when you can re, uh, add attacks or add damage. Those are your big ticket items. So definitely don't be fooled. Make sure you weigh the cost and benefit of things. There is definitely advantage to the Death Star kind of mentality where you get up all of your buffs onto one thing and really push hard with that. I think there is something to be said for that. And this is all me just saying you need to consider what you're doing and think about it in a way that is going to disregard this scarcity heuristic bias and really just go with what the numbers are like and make decisions based on facts rather than feelings i know that's sort of a charged phrase but when you're making decisions about warhammer uh and what to do in a turn often going with facts rather than feelings is probably the way to go um so yeah that is about it Thank you all for watching as always. Don't forget to like and subscribe, turn on notifications, support us on Patreon, come and join us on Twitter and Facebook, and I'll talk to you all later.